All right, welcome everyone, members of the press, concerned citizens, for this press conference to talk about the unfortunate death of Lakeisha Wilson. My name is Mark Harrington. I'm with the organization called Created Equal, and we're out of Columbus, Ohio, which is, at least from one you gotta understand right now, the hometown of Lakeisha. The purpose of the press conference is this. We're going to outline the facts as we have them up to date, as, as far as we know, up to this date. And then we are all going to call upon government officials to shut down this abortion center while we investigate what happened here. So we're going to be calling, down, uh, calling for the shut, shutting down of this abortion center while they investigate what happened here so that no other women die. And that's the purpose of the press conference. There are folks that are going to speak that have firsthand uh, information that were eyewitnesses to what happened here. They were on the sidewalk that day. There are folks that are going to share that have had personal communications with the family. And there are individuals here that have been very involved in investigating what has happened here. Uh, without delay, let me just first introduce our first uh, a speaker. Uh, let me just give you the rundown of the speakers before we do that. You're going to hear from Cheryl Solinger from Operation Rescue, Reverend Walter Moss from the National Black Pro-Life Coalition, Denise Leopold, Right to Life of Northeast Ohio, Reverend Arnold Colbra from Urban Outreach Director of Life Issues Institute, which is Dr. Jack Wilkie's organization out of Cincinnati. Dr. Day Gardner, National Bl Black Pro-Life Union. Janet Porter here from Faith to Action. You know Janet because of the heartbeat bill. Dale Hinkle, who was on the sidewalk that morning. It's part of uh, uh, what's right, what's wrong, what's and what's left. <laughs> I knew I was going to get that wrong, Dale. Anyway, so let me introduce Cheryl Solinger from Operation Rescue. <laughs> I'm here today because Operation Rescue first learned that a woman had been injured at this abortion clinic on March 21st. Um, Pastor Dale Hinckley um, was the one that notified us. He provided us with photographs. We immediately made an open records request um, for the 911 records and um, we were able to get the 911 audio file and computer-aided dispatch transcript. Um, the next day the documents and the audios clearly indicated that this patient um, was not breathing at all and that she had suffered cardiac or respiratory arrest slash death. That's not or death, it's slash death. So we were very concerned about that even in cases where we have um, seen confirmed patient deaths. We've never seen that in a 911 transcript. Um, we believe that she was not breathing for a minimum of 28 minutes on the record and we don't know how long she wasn't breathing before um, the clinic called 911. That is not a survivable um, situation. Later we were informed that um, the family had said that she had indeed undergone a quote-unquote late-term abortion and we are currently unclear about the gestational age of Lakeisha's baby. Um, I received email confirmation from the medical examiner's office on Monday that, in fact, Lakeisha Wilson had died, that she had been transported from this facility to the hospital, and um, that her body was in the custody of the county medical examiner's office. Um, as of um, yesterday, there was no determination of cause of death yet. We're still awaiting that. That is pending. We have a lot of questions about what happened to Lakeisha. Was there negligence involved, as we've seen over and over again in other parts of the country? Um, was the abortion done beyond the legal limits? What exactly, how exactly far along was she, and did this clinic perform an illegal late-term abortion on her? Or were there other complications that led to her death? 
You see, Lakeisha is not the only one to walk into an abortion clinic healthy and end up on a cold slab in the morgue. Um, other women, Tanya Reeves, Jeffro Morbelli, Maria Santiago, I could go on and on and on. Um, thousands of women are known to have died um, from similar uh, abortion complications, but yet abortion continues to be falsely portrayed as a safe, life-saving procedure by the abortion cartel. And I think that there are people um, that have suffered loss that would um, take issue with that characterization. It's clear that if pro-life groups had not discovered Lakeisha's, Lakeisha, Lakeisha's death, it would have been covered up, swept under the rug, and we wonder how many other women may have died from shoddy abortion practices in Ohio. No one actually knows. This kind of cover-up only adds to the illusion that abortion is safe, so that the next unsuspecting woman who walks into those doors has no idea that she might end up in an early grave. Because there is reason to believe that other women are at risk of suffering Lakeisha's tragic fate, we are calling on the Ohio Department of Health to immediately suspend preterm abortion facility license pending a full investigation. We've also lodged complaints with the Ohio Medical Board asking for an investigation into the abortionists involved in her um, medical care. Our hearts and our prayers go out to the grieving family of Lakeisha. We pray that they would find comfort in their Christian faith. And for their sakes, we continue to seek justice for Lakeisha and her preborn baby until this death trap is closed and those responsible are brought to justice through legal means. And to the Ohio Health Department, I have one final word, please. Close this abortion mill down. Amen. 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 Amen.